Hello and welcome back to session three, Exploring Trees and Hedgerows. Today we are going to be looking at the techniques and putting them all together from sessions one and two to create a more developed painting. Okay, now before you start your painting, you will need to consider which season you would like to explore. And obviously that will determine the colors you will use. Now in this one, this is a more of a wintry scene as you can see, bare branches on the trees. And this one has been done using only two colours. This one's Prussian blue and burnt umber. Um, now for this one, very similar, um, but this time a much more of a wind-blown looking tree. Um, and this one has actually got um, some burnt sienna added in here to give slightly more autumny colours. This one again is an autumny sort of feel about it, but this time I've actually um, incorporated some reds and oranges in here to give sort of the idea of autumn foliage falling from the trees, which I've spattered down here. And I've added some reds and russets down here. So I've got some um, alizarin crimson um, and some burnt sienna and some yellow ochre in, in here to get these lovely autumny colors. This one again is quite an autumny picture. I've got this one autumn berries, but um, again, I've just used Prussian blue and the burnt umber for the main part of the picture. Um, I have used some rose madder and some um, alizarin crimson to splatter so it gives you the impression of berries. Um, and I've also got some reds splattered down here into the dark colours, which add a little bit of zing. This one very slightly different. I put a little bit of pink in the sky there, just to add a bit more interest. And this one um, is a small a spring picture. I feel it's this one was trying to interpret blossom. Okay, so you will need to think about, um, I say the season to determine which colors you would like to use. Also the style of your tree. Um, maybe, I don't know if you've got any pictures you might want to look at for your tree. Um, you might want to look at the window if you've got trees uh, that you can see. Um, I'm today, I'm going to be trying to create a more of a spring picture, something similar to this one here. Um, I, we're going to be using burnt umber um, and Prussian blue for the tree. And I'm going to be using rose madder to do some splatters to get some blossom on a tree. Now for the sky, in this one in particular, I actually did use just the very diluted Prussian blue that I've used in the rest of the picture. But for today, for a bit of a change, I'm going to be using um, a cerulean blue, which is a much brighter, lighter blue, as you can see here, just to bring the changes a little bit. Right, so I will get myself ready and we'll start. Now I've got my paper taped down to a board. Um, that's not, you don't have to do this if you haven't got a board, it's fine. You can just sort of um, have your paper down on the table. Don't worry about it. The one thing you will need to do before you start, as well as thinking about the colours you're going to use and the type of tree you would like to, to create, is also thinking about where your land is going to be, just because we're going to be painting the sky first of all. So if you could just draw a little wiggly line where the top of your hedgerow is going to be, roughly. Um, and then we're going to, going to do the sky first and dry it off before we do the, the rest of the picture. So I've actually drawn a little line just here, very faintly in pencil. Do do it quite faintly because once you paint over it, you can't rub it out and it will spoil your painting. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to wet the sky area with clean water. That will allow the paint to flow nicely um, and you won't get lots of, sort of paint brush strokes there. So thoroughly wet it. And I'm going to take that down to my line here. I am going to have to lift the paper up in a minute so I can sort of see. If you lift the paper up, you can see where the paper is shiny and if you've missed any areas, if you don't want dry patches. Just have a little look. Yes, that looks fine. You can see a couple of dry patches there when I held it up. There. So you can wet this two or three times if you want to, to give yourself a bit more um, time um, to move the paint around. So I might do it one more time. Just allows the paint to flow nicely. Now I'm going to be using cerulean blue, which is a lovely, lovely bright blue. And I'm just going to paint down here quite randomly. Allow it to flow a little bit. A little bit more. Just keep moving it down the page and I'm just going to show you in a moment I'm going to let the paint flow a little bit 
and I'm also going to try and lift out some clouds. So at this stage, don't worry if it's patchy, it's fine. You can, if you want to, move, hold the paper a little bit like this and we can just let it flow slightly. So I'm just going to go in a little bit of clean water and I'm just going to, just holding up, letting that flow very slightly and you can then hold it downwards if you want to. Again, this way. And that will just allow the paint to flow and it gets, you get a much more sort of soft flowy effect and now what I'm going to do is a little bit pale here in the center here isn't it so I'm going to put a little bit more paint there it's just evened it up a little bit that's fine so now what I'm going to do I'm going to lift out some clouds while it's still wet so just get a piece of piece of tissue um I'm just going to a little bit of tissue and we're going to dab firmly and you want to then move the tissue so you've got a clean piece. And then, now when you're doing clouds, normally the tops of clouds are quite soft and fluffy and the bottoms are a little bit flatter if you look at clouds. So that's the sort of effect I'm trying to go for. Move quite swiftly. A lot of this is going to be covered up anyway with your tree. So just to give a bit of a background. But you can see that starts to give you the impressions of clouds and I'm going to go here as well. Keep remembering to change your tissue otherwise you'll just be adding colour rather than taking it away. So you can see that's giving some impressions, some nice clouds in the sky, nice soft billowy clouds. So what I need to do now when you're happy um, is you can then dry that off with a hair dryer or let it dry naturally. And um, before we get on, and we're going to be then putting our tree in. Okay, so I'm going to be um, starting my tree now. Um, I'm going to be creating a tree with the impression of cherry blossom on it and I thought I'd do a slightly twisty gnarled looking tree maybe slightly Japanesey looking okay so that's my idea so okay. using your stick as we did last time we're going to be I'm going to be using burnt umber first of all to start creating my tree shape so I'm going to start down down here at the base and I'm going to start working my way up to start creating my tree shape. I'm going to start at the bottom over here. I'm going to wiggle the stick a little bit to start getting some impressions of branches coming off here. I'm just going to start looking at the overall shape of the tree now and actually start adding some other suggestions of little branches coming off, which I'm going to firm these up a little bit in a moment, but just start thinking about the overall shape now.
it's not too bad. Just a few more. Right, what I need to start doing now is start to thicken, thicken up these um, branches. So I'm going to start using the side of the stick to sort of drag the paint now and uh, thicken these up. Okay. So I'll be doing that and I'll, I'll come back. Okay, so now I've actually put in the branches with a bit more definition. And what I'm going to now do is to concentrate on the trunk. Still just using my stick and the brown burnt umber. I'm going to now start looking at the trunk and just bringing these, this down a little bit. Let's do a few little scratchy marks just to start filling it in a little bit before I add a little bit more definition with some Prussian blue. Here and then I'm going to start thinking about the actual overall shape of this trunk. Actually, I want it to make a little bit more twisty looking, I think. I'll come down and just come and do a few little wiggle wiggles to get a little bit more going on. Sort of roots coming out from the base of the tree. Just a few little wiggles with the stick. I'm going to beef this up a little bit. And I think I want the base to be a little bit wider, I think. And shape that's got a little bit thin here now hasn't it so I think I might just bring that out a little bit that way Getting a bit more of an interesting shape now. And then start just beefing this up just a little bit at the bottom. There we are. And then we're going to come in and do some definition with some blue. I'm now going to be using some Prussian blue. I'm going to stick again and just as we did in session two, I'm going to um Make one side of the tree slightly darker than the other and just add a little bit more texture and marks to it. So I come down. Some wiggly marks coming out here. Just going to add a little bit more definition Oops. to some of these areas. That's a little bit heavy handed there. Now that is a little bit dark that way I've just done. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a tissue and I'm going to very carefully just dab that. That's better. That's just lighten that up again. There. So don't worry if you go a little bit a little bit heavy handed you can rectify it remember you probably depending on whether you're going to put anything on this whether you're going to put foliage on this or berries or blossom or if you're going to do a winter tree i mean if you are putting anything over the top you're not going to see all of this anyway once you once you've put something else over so just adding a little bit more
Okay, now I'm going to dry it off before we carry on. Now, this is all dried off, so it's all safe to touch. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding the hedge row in. I've got still got my, vaguely, you can see my wiggly little line that I did in light pencil. And what I'm going to do, we're going to, using a, a drinking straw like we did in session one, we're going to put a little bit of paint here, just do a very small section at a time, a little bit of paint and blow. And then I'm going to wet underneath and let the paint run down. And then I'm going to move along one little section at a time okay so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna show you that do one small section i'm going to be using <clears throat> prussian blue um burnt sienna and burnt umber for my hedgerow so i've just added a little bit of burnt burnt sienna in there to give it a little bit more brightness okay otherwise it would look a bit wintry so i'm just gonna a little bit of paint not very much so you don't want to do a small little bit at a time otherwise your, the paint will be drying before you've had time to do anything. And think about the shape of your, of this as well. Right, so now I'm going to start blowing. I'm going to go to the side. While it's still damp, I take my stick and I'm going to just add some grassy stems and come out and make these look a little bit more twiggy looking. And while it's still wet, also I'm going to just brush I'm going to be wetting down here just down here and I want some of that color to flow down into the picture so what we're going to do is going to touch that nuzzle that down and bring that color down into the picture you can always add add to that later if you think it's you haven't got enough I'm just going to move that to that I'll show you that now actually if I wet down here Think you haven't got enough or it's too, you know it's dry before you've had a chance to do anything what you can do is put a little bit more paint here a little bit more and my three colors clean brush and what i'm going to do is, is touch that paint and tr try and encourage that then to run down into where the water is you can just pull that down and that will run into where the, the water is, is flowing. Hopefully you can see that. And it gives you quite a nice effect. Just gonna put a little drip of bit of water on that and encourage it to run a little bit. There we are. And that gives you a nice soft effect. Back up and let it run. Put that way a little bit, that's it. So it gives you a bit of time if you do that to then before you move on to your second section. Right, so just a little tip actually while you're doing this, it might be a good idea to have two brushes, one you using your paint with and another clean one to add the water so that you haven't got to keep quickly wiping it off each time um, in between. Okay, so I'm going to keep working my way along. So I'm sort of that, happy with that section now. So what I can do now is just add a little bit more colour here and work my way along. Grassy areas, and that 
colour up. Just make one good at the hedgerow effect. So you can cheat a little bit and actually dip your, dip your stick in the paint and actually add some other, other little bits if you think it's a bit sparse. There we are. So I now need to wet underneath clean water. If I can get that paint to run, so I'm wetting down here. I can encourage that paint to run a little bit. That's it. Just allowing the paint to run a little bit. Again, you can put some water down there and just let it trickle down. <clears throat> Just softened it. There we are. <clears throat> so now I can move on to this next section. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep going in the same way. So I'm going to add some colour. Just remember the more paint you add at this stage, when you blow, the taller your stems will be. So don't put too much paint on or they might end up taller than the tree and that won't look very, very realistic proportion wise. Okay, so below. Let's go to the side. And then we're underneath again. So I'm wetting right down here, right down here, and then I'm going to come up and touch the paint with the wet brush. And that will run down into the coat. As you can see. And I can show you, I can put some more water on here and tilt the paper a little bit and let, actually let that run, let it run down into the water. Yeah, that's quite nice. And I'm just going to do this last little section. My one's not going to blow. So I'm going to do some lines with this stick and see if I can get that to follow my lines that I've already made. That's better. And then using the stick again. Grassy stems. And then I'm just going to wet underneath, wet down here, and then touch, touch the paint. However many times I do that, it's still lovely <laughs> every time. I love it. So pretty when it runs into the water, it's sort of random, it's lovely. One of the things I like about watercolours, the randomness of it, letting the paint run and do its thing. Right, I'm going to just dry that off a little bit there. There we are, I've got a bit of a splodge there. Okay, now what we're going to do is come on to this front area. So what we need to do is add a little bit of colour to this area next. 
Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of colour here and you've got the option of whether to put any grassy stems around the base of the tree. I think I might do a few. So I'm going to be using the same colours again. Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Prussian Blue. And I'm just going to put in a few, using my stick, I'm just going to come in, just do suggestion of a few little grassy stems. Just coming up from here. Just places the tree, I think, in sort of in the landscape rather than it sort of sitting there, add something to it. It's going to come in and put a few little brush from here. <clears throat> there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little bit of colour. I'm going to put a little bit of colour down here and using my stick, I'm going to make a few marks. So I'm going to exactly like we did before. I'm going to get um, some of the colour, I'm going to get some of the, oops, burnt umber. And I'm just going to move that around a little bit. All I've got is clean water now on my brush. I'm just moving that around a little bit, just to give a little bit of colour in here. I'll do the same on this side. Put a little bit of paint down. And then using just clean water on your brush. Just let the paint flow a little bit into the background. That's it. Just softens it off a little bit. So you've just got something there rather than it being <clears throat> quite so white. <clears throat> you could go in, I'm going to put a little bit of blue in as well. So on the Prussian blue. <clears throat> Again, just clean water. Just moving that around a little bit. And what I'm also going to do at this stage is, um, remember on session one I showed you, if you score the paper while it's damp, you will get a darker mark. So if I'm just using the, nothing actually on the stick at the moment, no paint, but it's just creating some marks in the darker paint. There we are, sort of the paint soaking in. So I'm also going to do um, some grassy stems in the foreground and some blossom on my tree. And at this stage, you need to decide if you want to put foliage on your tree and also foliage on your hedgerow. If you do, you can either use various shades of green or yellow and blue splatters to create greens. So I'm just going to dry this off and then we're going to do the next stage. Okay, so it's dry now and I can decide on what I'm going to do with my tree now at this stage. So I've decided to use rose madder to try and get some impression of blossom on my tree. If you wanted berries, you could use um, cadmium red or alizarin crimson would be good colours. Or you could use more autumn colours or you can go with greens, greens or yellows and blues to create different shades of green for foliage. So I'm going to be using a palette knife. Um, to do some splattering, but you can obviously put some paint on a brush like I showed you and do splattering that way. One little tip actually, I forgot to do this, so I will do this now, is it's a good idea to cover the areas you don't want splatters on with a piece of tissue. So I'm going to go like this over this, this section of my painting so that I don't get, get it everywhere. Little tip. That's um, happened to me lots of times, <laughs> lots of splatters where I didn't actually really want them. So I'm going to be going like this randomly over the tree and then I'm going to go and add a little bit of water to try and actually get these to disperse a bit more.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get some water, my palette knife, and I'm going to just flick, flick some clean water over this to try and get the paint to run a little bit more. It will help it spread and merge and it will give it a more of a blossom look, hopefully, more of a sort of frothy look. But also it will make the colour a little bit paler because, um, see, this is a little bit darker than cherry blossom. So it needs to be diluted a little bit further. Hopefully you can see the difference on this side of the tree where I've added water. It's, um, the paint merges a lot more. You get a much more sort of dense looking, frothy appearance, which is more what I was after. doing this until, until you're happy with it really <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with you at this stage to actually you could go in with a second color and splatter another color over the top as well and let the two colors merge that works really nicely for foliage or for any anything actually you could have two different shades of pink you could have add a darker red into this if you wanted to Rather a lot of splatters up in my sky. I should have put a bit of tissue up there. Never mind. There. Okay. I think that's enough splattering on there. Giving it a nice sort of blossomy look. So what I'm going to do now is I've got a couple of areas where the paint is running rather too much. So at this stage, take a little bit of tissue and I'm just going to just mop up some of that water a little bit just to stop it running too much there we are, it's a bit better i'm going to go in several places and just lift off that's better actually some of the color actually making it look more pink rather than a red which is actually better isn't it for the, the cherry blossom effect that i was after That's a bit better. Just softening it off a little bit. There. Good. Okay. I'm happy with that. So what I need to do now is decide if if you wanted to, you could put some green foliage on your um, hedgerow and a little grassy area down here, which I'm going to do and show you. I'm just going to do a few little grassy stems. You can use your stick or you can use a fine brush and a palette knife to scratch out some areas like I showed you before, just so it gets in the lighter areas. So I'm going to do that just down in this corner. Um, I'm going to be using my um, burnt sienna. But I'm also going to go in with a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to go in with a little bit of yellow as well, I think. And a tiny little bit of the Prussian blue. So I'm just getting a few little shades in there. And what I'm going to do now is take a very fine brush. And I'm just going to flick, flick, flick. And the paints, different colour paints will merge, which is quite nice. And you get slightly different colours coming through. I'll just expand that a little bit, make it a bit, a bit more of a bank. There we are. A bit of blue in there. And what I'm going to do while it's still damp I'm going to get my palette knife and just scratch through a little bit as well there. that just sort of finishes it off 
if you wanted to you could do a few more splatters up down here if you want to you could make it look as if you've got petals or berries or something dropped down down here which could be quite nice but i'm happy with that and i think that's finished now okay so here's the finished painting i've taken it off the borders you can see it always looks much nicer once you take the tape away and you've got a nice clean border now this um think about when you're doing this different ways you could create this i've done blossom here you could do um berries for the autumn or autumn leaves um lovely green spring foliage or you could have bare branches for a winter scene um if you do facebook um, you could share some of your images on our Art for All page, which um, the details will be coming up, along with a slideshow of some students who um, work, who have done this in a class with me before. Next time, we're going to be using similar techniques, but next um, we're going to be doing a lovely bluebell bank, which I hope will be a bit of fun. All right then, bye-bye. See you next time.